Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview on how to install the Lumenzia and Lumenzia Basics panels for Photoshop. Uh, this is the Windows video. If you're using a Macintosh, please see the separate video for Mac. The installation on a Mac is a little bit simpler and a little bit different. So uh, if you are using Windows, the first thing you need to do is download Lumenzia. You should have an email after purchase with a link to download or if you get an upgrade, another uh, link. And once you've downloaded, you simply want to right click and choose extract all. And I would recommend using that approach. If you have a custom uh, unzip program, I would still just right click and choose extract. Use the built-in Windows uh, utility. Uh, and obviously I'm on Windows 10 here. Your version of Windows may look slightly different, but all the concepts should be the same. So once we've installed or uh, unzipped the contents here, we can click into it and we can see all the various Lumenzia contents. There is the how to install doc, uh, both as a Word doc and a PDF. So whatever you've got on your system to view it. Uh, there is this install JSX bin file. This is the install script. This is the key thing you'll need to install. Uh, and with that, uh, let's get going. So you want to right click on Photoshop. Make sure you, uh, you, you may have to do this twice here. Right click and choose run as administrator or run elevated. And the reason you need to do that is if you don't give extra permissions to Photoshop, then it won't be able to run the parts of the script that copy files. It's built in a security option. So you just simply need to let it know that it's okay to run a script by running as administrator. So once we've opened up here, just give it a second. Once we've opened up, just simply go up to the file menu. You wanna go down to scripts, browse. So it was file, scripts, browse, click that. And this is where you can navigate to find the script you want to run. And it's already pointing to the correct directory in this case. Uh, you may need to navigate there, but you don't see the file because you need to point it to JSX bin. This is a little filter. So just need to let it know which files to look for. Once you've done that, you should see the file here and you can just simply double click or hit load and it's going to run the installer. And at this point, it should simply be a matter of checking the accept the terms. You could choose to not install one of the panels if you want, but they're going to both install by default and then just hit install. And assuming everything goes well, you get a message letting you that Lumenzia installed and a second message letting you know that the basics panel installed. And so at this point they are installed, but if you go up to try and open them, you won't see them just yet because we need to restart Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hit X here and we'll just relaunch Photoshop. And once this comes up, if the panels are able to run at all, then we are good to go. It's really kind of a, it works or it doesn't work type of scenario. Uh, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you will uh, probably also have to install one additional plugin from Adobe. And I'll show that in just a minute. So once we get going here, you're gonna go up to the Windows menu extensions and now we can see both basics and Lumenzia. So just click on those to open each panel. So I've got the basics panel and go back up one more time and to Lumenzia. And now I've got both panels. You can move to the edge and resize this as you want. You want to get rid of those little resize scroll bars. So if you like where they are, you're all set and you can uh, get running to test that they work. Just click on any button. And we see an error message here that it wants to open a, an image. So that is an indication that the panel is working. If we've gotten to this point, everything's good. Uh, like I said, if you're in an older version of Photoshop, you may need to do one more thing specifically for vibrance and saturation. I'll come to that in a second. Um, now, once you have these here, I like to drag these. If you click, hold and drag up, you'll see these little blue markers is telling you where it's going to drop. So I'm going to move it where it's right above here, this thin line, let go. And I put Lumenzia above my layers palette do the same thing with basics and now I've got both panels docked here uh, for just quick and easy access and again I can resize things to create a little bit more room um, and if I ever want to get these out of the way I can simply double click to kind of hide them so that's the quick and easy way uh, to put these where you want now I'm gonna go ahead and close these and just show you if you ever didn't have the panels here for some reason you close them or you don't know why you don't see them just go back up to window extensions and there's the panel, click on that and you'll open it right back up. So we are completely installed on a new system. If you click on vibrance or saturation and you're running CS6 through CC 2014, you're probably gonna get an error message asking to install the optional multi plugin. Uh, so what is that about? That is a, an Adobe uh, 
application that adds a little bit of functionality that's needed for uh, one of the filters here. And we're just going to create a new file so I can show how you test that you have it. So if you didn't get an error message on those, um, you're probably okay. But the way you can truly test that you have the optional multi plugin is open any image, go to filter, other, and if you see this HSB slash HSL, then you are properly installed. If you don't see it here or you're seeing a message about the optional multi plugin, we need to do one more thing to install. And I will show you how we do that now. So to get to the optional multi plugin, uh, let's go ahead and open up our installation document here, which has all the information on how to install as well as if we go all the way down to the end, uh, it's going to have information about the optional multi plugin, which as I said, uh, actually comes from Adobe. So let's go back up here. Uh, so you're gonna have to download it from Adobe separately. And here we go. So we've got the links. So I just want to click on the download link for Windows. So I'm just going to open up this folder. If I go back to my downloads folder or wherever files get downloaded on your computer, I now have this optional multi plugin folder here, or this zip file, and just need to extract it. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull out several folder or several plugins that come from Adobe. They're all kind of in one place here. And just go to the version that corresponds with your version of Windows. So I have 64-bit Windows, so I go in here. And here's the optional multi-plugin. I just need to copy this from where it is now to the right destination folder. And to get to there, go back to the instructions here, and we'll see I'm on Windows 10 64-bit. Uh, and let's say that I want to install it on CC. So if I do that, I want to copy this row here in purple. So this is, I can navigate here if I want to directly, um, but I'm just going to copy it. I find it a little bit easier to just simply do it this way. And I need to create a new window here. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side copy. And if I go up into this browser bar here, right-click and paste. So I'm just literally just copied and pasted in that link I had, hit return, and it navigates right to where I need to be. Now you can see that there's an already an optional multi plugin here because I previously installed it. I'm just going to delete it um, just so we can kind of see this process. Uh, just simply grab it, just click and drag it over. Uh, you'll see it's move. I'm just going to hit option or alt uh, to, I'm sorry, uh, the command key to copy it um, and give it permission. And it just simply copies it into this location. So at this point, by putting it into this plugins folder, I have now installed the optional multi plugin for Adobe Photoshop CC and I'd be good to go. So it's, that's all you need to do is copy that into place. Uh, so that's the complete installation. Uh, if for any reason you got some error message during the installation, it is possible that you have security settings on your computer that aren't gonna allow the, the script to run. So that was back to in the original Lumenzia uh, files here, we had this JSX bin file. If you can't run this for any reason, that's okay. There's a separate way to install the panel. Uh, and, and that is manually just copying the required folders. Uh, installing a panel is literally just as simple as uh, copying and pasting these, these uh, folders. So in assets, you're gonna see Lumenzia and basics. Uh, one folder for each panel. Just go to the panel you wanna install, open it up, and you'll see these subfolders. Uh, the ZXP folder is if you wanna use the Adobe Extension Manager, that's a, a yet another way of installing. I just wanna show you the manual method. So you have the flash, and you have the HTML folders. Flash is for CS6. HTML is for CC or newer, including CC 2014 and CC 2015. So let's assume we're gonna install on CC. So I'm gonna open this up and I need to copy this to the appropriate location on my computer. And to find it, go back to the installation instructions. And we just need to go to the section for manual installation, which is marked as method number four. And in there, we're gonna see a folder location that we wanna copy. And I apologize for the speed of this computer. I'm running some things in the background. They're kind of slowing things down. Um, so we can see, I wanna to go to the Windows folder for CC. I just need to copy this location. Now you can manually navigate here if you want to, but just be aware that some of these folders are probably hidden folders. So if you haven't enabled the ability to see hidden folders on your computer, you might not think you have one of these folders and you might not get there. So I really recommend doing the copy paste method here. Um, that way it doesn't matter if the folders are hidden or not, you're gonna be able to get there. So I'm just gonna create one more window again. 
And now I'm going to go up in here again, right click, choose paste, hit enter. And this is taking me right to this location. So this is where my Adobe Photoshop CC extensions are. You can see I've got mini bridge, I've got the cooler panel, uh, etc. But I don't have anything for Lumenzia yet. But all I have to do now is just drag and drop this over. I'm going to hit control to make a copy and give it permission. And it's going to copy everything over. And at this point, when I have the com.lumenzia.ext folder here, I am already installed and I can open up and, and get running. Let's go ahead and install basics. So I'm going to go back to my assets folder, go to basics, go to HTML because I'm on CC and again, make a copy. And so now I've installed both panels in here and I should be good to go when I run Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, if you don't see the panel open or you see any sort of error message about a digital signature, one thing to watch out is you need to make sure that you've copied these folders, right? Just this one folder, which is going to say com.lumenzia for the HTML, or if you're in the flash panel, it just says basics. That's the folder you want to copy. Don't copy flash or HTML itself, just their contents. And don't copy the sub contents or, or don't uh, manually go into here. If you don't copy everything or if you change anything, then that can corrupt the file. So just copy this folder in its entirety. If for any reason you have any issue, you can simply delete what you've installed in the target folder here, unzip the folder that you downloaded or the, the zip file uh, and start the whole process over. There's really no harm, no fall. As I said, it's simply a matter of copying the right folder from here into your destination. Uh, and for the multi-plugin, same thing. You just need to download the multi-plugin and copy it to the folder you need it. It's just that easy. Once it's in place, if you click on any of the buttons in the panel and you get any sort of activity out of the panel, then you're good to go. There's really no kind of halfway. It's going to run or it's not, with the exception of the vibrance and saturation buttons, which may require the optional multi-plugin that I showed here. In this video, you'll learn how to install Lumenzia or other extension panels for Photoshop from Greg Benz Photography. Now, the particular details here may change a little bit in terms of the files you see or some little nuances, just depending on the version of the software you're installing. But the general principles here will apply. And it's very important that you follow these steps closely because installing extension panels for Photoshop is not like installing other software on your computer. And some of the things you would normally do really don't apply here. So please pay careful attention and I'll try to point out any critical pitfalls. The first thing you want to do is start with the zip file that you've downloaded. You should have a single zip file. That's the only thing you'll get from me. If you see multiple different files open up, that's because your browser has already extracted the contents of the zip file for you. And I would generally recommend starting with the zip to make sure it's done correctly. So if you don't see it, be sure to check your downloads folder, or it may be even in your, in your trash bin. For example, the Safari browser on Mac will unzip the contents and then throw your zip into the trash. So that's just something the browser is doing for you but you do have the zip somewhere in your computer. Once you've located it, you wanna right click on it and choose open to extract the contents. Once you do that, you're gonna see this folder is created. Now again, the specific contents here may change, but in general, what you should see is something like a written how to install guide along with install videos. You'll of course see other user manuals that explain how to use the software, the license terms, which you want to make sure you read these before you install the software, and then the installer itself here. You do not want to double click or directly run this file. Instead, we're going to run it from Photoshop, go into Photoshop and go to file scripts, browse. This is how you run these JSX or JSX bin file types. You need to run it through Photoshop. 
Once you do this, you want to go point to the download folder where you have it unzipped, click on the install Lemenzia file. If you don't see this file and you're in CS6, look for a little filter at the bottom where you can change whether it shows JSX, JSX bin, or both types of files so that you can see this file here. Once you see the installer, click on it, click open, and you'd see the installer interface. And you just simply choose which software you want to install, check to confirm that you've read and accept the terms in the license, and then just simply click on install. Once you do that, you should see a pop-up message letting you know that it's installed and you're done. Now, if you go up to window extensions, you'll find you cannot see the software yet. And that's because Photoshop will only try to load extension panels when it first starts. So we need to quit and restart Photoshop first before it's available. So we'll just quit. And once we've restarted Photoshop, look under window extensions, and this is where you find all your software. So I can just click on it. Then I can click and drag to put it where I want it within the Photoshop interface. I'm gonna go back to the window extensions basics to grab the basics panel because they are installed as two separate panels, but I'm now done with the installation. Now, if you've had any problems with this installation up to this point, you may see a warning about a digital signature error. If you see that, it almost certainly comes from one of three problems. Not unzipping the file as shown in this video, unzipping it on a cloud drive or something other than your computer's drive because the files themselves are signed looking at the metadata, the file dates and things like that. And when you copy these files and move them around between different hard drives, that data can change. So it's important that you unzip it on the same hard drive where you're gonna install the software. And then thirdly, if you have antivirus software on your computer, it may falsely detect the software as unknown code. So it has a false positive and puts it into quarantine. So you may need to go into your antivirus program and unquarantine those files. You can also do a manual installation if you prefer. So the installer just copied files for you, but you can also use the installer to help with a manual install. So I'm gonna show that right now. We'll go up to file, scripts, browse. Just like before, we're going to point into this folder that we've extracted and run the installer. But this time, instead of clicking on install, I'm gonna click show panels folder. And when I do that, it's popped open this new window that points directly to this extensions folder. I've got a shortcut, so your version will look a little different, but this is going to be where you would install the software. It's already installed. You can already see these com Lemenzia and com Lemenzia basics ext folders. That is the panel. But if you're going to manual install it, you just go to the downloaded unzipped content under the assets folder, and then go to the panel you want to install, such as Lemenzia. And then you have a couple different folders here. You want to go to Flash if you're on CS6 or HTML if you're on CC. And then this is the software you need to install. You just want to copy it from here to here. On a Mac, you can hold down the Option key, click and drag. And when you let go, you'd copy it. Now I already have it in place. I'm just going to replace it. It doesn't matter. But that's all the installation is, is just getting the copy from the unzip files over here. If you run into any problems getting installed, be sure to see the troubleshooting guide for more information.